¿Qué tal, everybody? I'm Manuel Teodoro. And I'm Marierita. Bienvenidos. Welcome to another edition of Hispanics Today. Our health requires diligent care to prevent disease. However, Latinos are prone to stay away from the doctor's office unless we're sick. With millions uninsured, it's tougher than ever to stay one step ahead of health problems. In Atlanta, Georgia, the Latino community comes together to take care of itself and one another. Preventative health care is critical to reduce the risk of future disease, yet millions of people do not visit a doctor unless they think something's wrong. One of the major reasons I don't see a doctor is because it's expensive. The education is another barrier. They, the need to, to educate them on the yearly, for a yearly pass a year, a yearly mammogram after year 50. Almost 11 million Latinos in the U.S. do not have health insurance, yet they suffer from some illnesses in higher numbers than other ethnic groups. Over 10% of the Latino population has diabetes. Latinas have higher cholesterol rates than non-Hispanics. The number of age-related cases for Hispanos is also on the rise. Yet Hispanics continue to resist seeing a doctor. Some are afraid to have their worst fears confirmed. Others are modest about their bodies, and millions of Latinos do not speak English. And that's the thing is they're following the breast. They need to know they keep going straight, straight up and down, straight up and down. Si, tienen que, tienen que ir arriba, subir arriba y bajar. These barriers keep thousands of Latinos isolated and sometimes unaware of available medical resources. If you go to outlying counties, I mean, there's really a, a, no interest and, and, and a total uh, dissatisfaction with the Latino community. One Atlanta resident knows how tough it is for Latinos to care for their health. Venus Hines is a flight attendant who twisted her ankle in 1992 during a routine trip from St. Louis to Los Angeles. She went to her doctor who found a lump in her breast. Hines spent several anxious days awaiting the results of a lumpectomy. By the sixth day, I was getting really nervous because two days later, I was going to start law school, and I was determined to start law school no matter what. And, um, and I got the call, and the words were, Venus, I wish I could say it was benign, and I dropped the phone. At the time she was diagnosed with breast cancer, Hines was a 41-year-old single mother of two children. Devastated by the news that her life may be at stake, Hines decided to get smart about her disease, especially since she felt she couldn't rely solely on her physicians. I'll never forget the doctor. When I went to see him with my 20 questions, he said, uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time to answer these questions, but what I do have is the latest New England Journal of Medicine. Hines took matters into her own hands, summoning the strength to research her illness. She was alarmed by the lack of information available in Spanish. Once again, Hines took charge, contacting the American Cancer Society to help her create information about breast cancer in English and Spanish. She then rallied Washington to address the lack of culturally appropriate health information available to Latinos. Along the way, Hines found her calling as an activist. Other than law, there's other ways that we can help our community, and I realize that. So I will probably end up getting back to graduate school, finishing getting my doctorate degree, and continue my work with breast cancer in Latinas. We definitely need more Latino researchers. That's, that's obvious. In 1997, Hines created Dia de la Mujer Latina, Incorporated, to promote health awareness to Atlanta's underserved Latino community. Last week, it hosted its annual health fair where over 6,000 Latinos showed up to obtain free and low-cost medical services. Doctors, nurses, interpreters, and over 300 volunteers donated their time on a Saturday afternoon to offer free pap smears, mammograms, breast exams, prostate screenings, and countless other services. The staggering turnout confirms that in too many cases, the demand for health care services far exceeds supply. In the meantime, pioneers like Hines continue to give back. I am taking care of my people. Here I thought I was going to do that as an attorney working on civil rights, and, and now I'm doing something even bigger that I never imagined. And it was all because of the slip and fall in the airplane. Dia de la Mujer Latina is testament to the commitment shown by Atlanta's Latino community to help its own. Until everyone in the U.S. has access to health care, these events and their heroes continue to fill a critical void. We want to take care of this ourselves. Um, Latinos want to get together and want to uh, fix our problems, and we are doing that. We are happy to report that Venus Hines beat cancer by catching the disease early. Breast self-examinations are the most effective means for detecting cancer at a treatable stage.